All right, we are now going to set up a new lab environment in which the robot can follow a line course. You can do this by creating a new project directory. And I would put this in the same directory you are currently in and call it line following. And this time we will also add a rectangle arena. All right. Now what we want to do is we want to change the texture of the ground to show a line that the robot can follow. For this we go into the scene 3 and in this case we cannot change the appearance the way we want. We should turn this rectangle arena into a base node. Now we are able to edit all its children including the solid floor. And in this case, we have an appearance node in the shape. And here we can change the image texture. And I provide a new URL. And for this, you will need to download the line underscore course dot PNG file from the resources tab of this video. And it looks like this. Now in order to scale it appropriately, you want to remove the repeating and then you will need to add a texture transform and now we can change the scale so we set the scale to be 0 0.5 meters on X and 0 0.5 meters on Y now it's a good time to save your world now we're gonna add an EPUC robot and place the EPUC robot onto the center of the start line. Now instead of moving the robot, I want you to move the rectangular arena because I want the Webot's coordinate system to be at the start line origin. So we can move it over like this and you are free to pick the values that I find here so this 0 0.3 is a little too far. This is a little too wide. So 30.5 centimeters. And now we want to move it down to the start line. And again, we will need to fine tune this a little bit. And this is a good number. Now what is left is to turn the robot so that its x-axis points forward or up in this case and we go into the rotation. It's already rotating around the z-axis. We will need a positive rotation as you can see from the arrow following the right hand rule and we turn the robot by exactly 90 degrees or half pi. Now let's save this again. Now the robot is not able to see the start line just yet it needs another sensor which you can add by adding something to the ground sensor slot which is here and when you search for ground you should find the epoch ground sensors these are three distance sensors that are facing downward just like here and they are called gs0 to gs3 now let's save and add a new controller for this robot And we select the Python controller and call it line following as well. Now I already have this code in my clipboard, which is the code we used previously for opening the light sensors. Now let's call this ground sensors. Now let's change this to ground sensors GS. So GS and GS and we have only three of these we enable each of them and now we write code to actually read them for all the ground sensors in ground sensors we apply them to 
to the G array. We copy this code here and let's see if this works by printing it. And what we haven't done, we have to select the new controller. It's called line following. We save this. And now we see values in the bottom left. Some of them are very high, some of them are a little lower. Now the sensors reflect higher values when the ground is white and lower values when the ground is black. Let's visualize this here. View, optional rendering, distance sensor rays. And now you see the three distance sensors pointing down and we should be able to see that two of them are hitting the white ground and one of them hits the black ground. When we move the robot, we can see how the values change. Now the left one and the center one are hitting the white ground and the right sensor is hitting the black area. All right, now we have set up this line following course and your goal will be to write a controller that uses those light sensors to go around the circle and then measure the actual distance that the robot has traveled using the forward kinematics equations that we derived in the previous video.